Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with the Actually Tiny House Project, and today I'm going to show you how to make a super cool woven wooden screen. I've been building this particular style of screen for about 10 years now. It is a really great way to use up extra materials from your building projects, and I think you're going to be really surprised at how fast and how easy this is to build for how beautiful it ends up looking when you're finished. These are great for creating railings, partitions, and privacy screens. And in this case, I'm going to be making an exterior privacy screen for this window so I can block this view here a little bit, change the light, and bring the overall aesthetic more into line with the rest of the building here. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I've done here is just laid out all the different wooden pieces that I just finished cutting to assemble the screen. The reason that I didn't show measuring or cutting these is because the size that these need to be really depends on the size that you want your screen to be, the wood that you have available, and whether or not you're gonna be purchasing new wood. Now, if you're gonna be buying new wood for this project, you really wanna think about your layout because if you do this right, you can get almost 100% yield out of your boards, which not only is good for the environment, it also saves you a lot of money as well. So the wood that I'm using here today is red cedar that was left over from trimming the house here. There's a lot of clear red cedar. There's some red cedar with knots. And depending on what pieces were gonna be used where, I kind of selected for which ones I used. I'm gonna leave this stuff completely untreated and just leave it outside to weather naturally. But you could put treatment on your wood and you could also choose different woods depending on whether you're doing an exterior or an interior application. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go through all the different parts. I'm gonna talk about what they are, kind of the general sizing of these, but don't feel like you have to be chained to these specific sizes. If you have slightly different sized wood, you can always modify this a little bit. And if there's anywhere that you can't, I'll make sure that I point that out. So first up here, I've got the top and the bottom rails for the screen. And this is one and a half inches thick by two and a half inches wide by however long I want my screen to be. And I've cut a channel down the middle here that's a half inch deep by 5 eighths to 11 sixteenths wide. And you could do this with a router, you could do this with a dado bit on your table saw. Personally, I usually just crank up my table saw blade and do a bunch of passes because I find that it's quicker than doing a tool change. So this is the bottom and top rails. The side rails for your screen are once again an inch and a half thick by two and a half inches wide. And these are gonna be three inches less than the overall height that you want your screen to be. Now, here I've got my verticals, and these are going to be the pieces that the wooden slats weave in and out of. And so I put a stave at the end, and then one every foot. So this is a five foot screen, and I'm gonna put six of these in, because it seems like 12 inches, 10 inches, somewhere in there is a pretty good spacing for these. The dimension on these is, 5 eighths by 5 eighths or 11 sixteenths by 11 sixteenths. And these are gonna be two inches shorter than the overall height that you want your screen to be. Now, finally here, I've got all of the thin wooden slats that we're gonna use for weaving into the screen here. And I made these an inch and a half, or an inch and five eighths tall by three sixteenths of an inch thick. Now these don't have to be an inch and five eighths tall. I just do that because it allows me to rip a two by four straight in half, and then I get 100% yield off my board. Now the three sixteenths thickness on these has to do with how easy this is to weave and how likely they are to break. And I find that three sixteenths is kind of a sweet spot where you have a good strong screen, but you're not constantly breaking these while you're trying to weave them into place. Now, the length of these needs to be three inches less than the overall width of your screen, or basically just the distance between the inside of the side rails. And these particular boards I make out of clear, straight-grained wood. If you try to do this with wood that has knots, or there's a bunch of grain run out in here, as you weave these together, these are gonna be constantly breaking. And so what I like to do is, even if I'm using clear, straight-grained wood, I will cut myself a few extras of these, so if I break one, I don't have to go back and process some more wood. Now, there's a lot of table saw work in this particular project, so I just wanna make it really clear that anytime you're operating a table saw, you need to have the appropriate safety equipment on, you need to know what you're doing, and you wanna be using feather boards and push sticks, especially when you're cutting up thin strips of wood like all these little woven pieces right here. 
So my first step when I'm laying out my material for one of these screens is to cut my top and my bottom rail to whatever width I want the screen to be. And then I'll cut my material for the woven strips to three inches less than that. And then I'll go ahead and cut all of my woven strips and physically lay them out and then take a measurement of that height and use that to determine the height of my side rails and then also the height of my vertical staves which is one inch longer than that. And the reason I do it this way is because if you do the side rails and the vertical staves first, these will never line up perfectly and you'll end up with a little short piece that doesn't look very good. So once again, I lay out all of my woven strips first. I take the height of that. That is the height of my side rails and my vertical staves are one inch longer than that. So starting out the assembly here, I'm gonna go ahead and screw the bottom rail only into the side rails with a couple of three and an eighth inch deck screws. Anytime that you're screwing anywhere near the end of a board like this, you always want to use a countersink and pilot the hole. Otherwise you'll just end up splitting the end of the board. So next thing I'm gonna do here is measure the distance between my side rails here, and I'm gonna divide that by however many vertical staves that I have. Now, like I said before, it seems like somewhere between 10 and 14 inches is kind of the sweet spot for putting your staves. In this case, I have 57 inches between the side rails, and dividing that by the five spaces I have, I get roughly 11 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna go along the bottom here with my tape measure and I'm gonna mark every 11 and a half inches and that's gonna give me the stave locations. Now, another thing I'll do here while I'm marking this out is I'll get myself a woven strip, maybe something that wasn't good enough to put into the screen and I'll set it down in this same channel and I'll mark those same marks onto this. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is gonna be a story pull that'll help us keep the alignment for the vertical staves so as I'm weaving the screen, they don't get off angle. So next I'm gonna turn this whole thing upright like this. I'm gonna grab one of my vertical staves and I'm gonna grab my top rail. And I'm gonna slide the stave into the channel at the bottom. And then I'm gonna hook the top rail over the top. And the reason I'm doing this right now is I'm double checking to make sure that the staves are the right length. And I can see here that my distance is an eighth of an inch too long on these. So the top rail can't meet the side rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my staves down by an eighth of an inch and then this is all going to come together nice and tight and you want to do this at this point because if you didn't do this and then you wove your whole screen together you'd be pretty disappointed when your top rail didn't fit now once i'm sure that my staves are going to fit here i'll just lay this whole screen back down and then i will take the stave and slide it between the top and the bottom rails up against the outside of the side rail here now keep in mind we're still not screwing on the top rail because we're gonna have to take that off to weave the screen this is just helping us get the alignment of this vertical stave here because the next thing i'm going to do is screw this to the side rail here so this isn't absolutely necessary, but it does make this process a little bit easier. So with this aligned between the top and the bottom rails, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to attach this. You could also nail this. Personally, I am a huge fan of these little GRK fin trim screws right here. You usually don't have to use a pilot bit if you're not screwing too close to the ends and they have a really fine finish head. I use these all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple screws here and screw this in so it's not gonna move. Now, very carefully, I'm gonna turn this whole thing up like this, and I'm gonna take the top off here, and you've gotta kinda of be careful during the whole screen weaving process here because these legs really aren't very strong until the top is on here. What I like to do if I can is have something that I can clamp one side to right here. I've got this post, and that'll just help keep this in place for me. So. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and get my staves here and I'm gonna put these into each location. And you're gonna see really quick here that this is kind of hilarious because for the first couple screens that you're trying to weave in here, it is so frustrating because these are gonna be constantly falling over and there's no real good advice here. You're just gonna have to deal with it. But as we weave this together, these will start to stabilize and then you can continually reference back to your story stick here to make sure that these aren't getting off angle. So what I'm gonna do here is just start weaving the screen together. I'll leave the camera rolling and you can see how this comes together.
So like I said, the first few of these are really frustrating, but just be patient, find a way to deal with it. And once you get a few rows up like this, this gets easier and easier. The important thing is that you're taking your story stick every strip and just holding it up like this and aligning these vertical battens because if you don't do these and these start to tip one way or the other you're not going to be able to pull them back so you want to keep your alignment and then you can just start weaving back and forth and back and forth sliding the strips down all the way until you get to the top so now that i've got all the strips woven in here i'm just going to take my top rail and i'm going to cap off the staves Make sure that everything is nice and lined up, and then I'm going to pile it and countersink and attach this to the top with deck screws the same way as we did on the bottom. So that's pretty much it for building the basic screen here. As you can see, this is ridiculously easy for something that ends up turning out looking this finely crafted. Now, what you do from here really depends on how much work you want to put into it and what application you're using it in. This is just going to be an outdoor screen and we don't mind it weathering naturally, so I'm going to leave this wood raw. Now, if you do decide to finish this, you can probably put a light oil or stain on it at this point, but if you're going to be using anything thicker than that, like a polyurethane, you probably want to do that before you assemble all the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and sand it down a little bit. I'm going to hit the edges with a 45 degree chamfer bit on my router, which just gives it kind of a nice, elegant appearance. I've used these as deck railings and cap the top of them with two by sixes. It's a great way to enclose the deck in a small structure and it just ends up looking fantastic. Now, obviously these make good privacy screens. They make great partitions. They're nice and transportable because they're so lightweight, which makes them really, I think, a really good match for a mobile lifestyle like a tiny house. Uh, you can also use these as small gates and doors. I wouldn't do something like say a full-size fence gate or a driveway gate, but if you're talking about maybe a door to an outdoor shower, this is nice because it lets air and it lets light through. And in that case, you would just take a small wire and a turnbuckle the same way that you would do with a regular gate and run it from one corner down to the other corner. And that would help stabilize it because otherwise it would tend to rack and get out of square. So anyways, that is making these simple woven screens. I'm really excited that I had a chance to make this video. I've wanted to show people how to do this for a really long time. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can also find us on our website, which is actuallytiny.com, where we've got a growing library of tiny house resources and a bunch more great tiny house videos. You can find us on Instagram, which is at actuallytiny, where we post a daily build blog of everything that we do here, including time-lapse videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care, be safe, and have fun building your tiny house.